Hello everyone, welcome, I'm Robert, and today I want to talk about my picks for last year's People's Choice Top 200 solo games. You might be familiar with this tradition that the One Player Guild carries every year over at Board Game Geek. And today I want to focus on my picks for numbers 20 through 16. But let's first talk about my honorable mentions. All right, so these are the games that I was not able to fit on the top 20, sadly, uh, because these are indeed wonderful games. But as I try more and more games, this just gets more and more difficult uh, choosing what should be on the top 20. But uh, let's start talking about uh, some of them, all right? Uh, and then we'll move on to my top 20. But uh, let's discuss first Dungeon Degenerates. So I tried it for the first time last year. Wonderful RPG in a box, one of the best you can buy right now. And uh, there's another adventuring game that trumps this for me, which you will see later in the list, all right? Uh, and if you want to hear my extended thoughts, I'll leave a link to my review, all right? Then we have Eon's End, one of the best solo board games you can buy, just great game all around, great boss battler, great deck builder. Um, I went a bit too shopping crazy and got all the content for the first wave and then um, War Eternal. I really shouldn't have because honestly, I'm just enjoying the base game content just fine. I haven't had the need to break out any expansions yet. Uh, so I'm ju I just thoroughly enjoy that game. Uh, haven't felt the need to even uh, check out any expansions. Uh, so yeah, I have a box that has like 10 pounds of uh, cards. Uh, I managed to fit everything in the base set, set box, but maybe I shouldn't have done that. I know that there's other legacy versions and whatnot. There's many iterations of Eon's End. I uh, haven't got to check them out yet. Uh, now moving on to Nosjord. Uh, it was my first a solo Euro game, and you'll see as you as we go through the list, you'll notice that I don't have a lot of Euros uh, listed. I'm not too much of an Euro guy. Maybe that'll change later, uh, but I do love me some Nofsjord. Uh, it sets up quick, plays fast, just lovely to look at. I love how the board presses it has, um, and it's just one of the best solo, um, uh, solo Euros you can get, all right? Highly recommend it. We move on to Shadowrun Crossfire. And I didn't play it last year, played it for the first time in 2021. Uh, and I got hooked on it, played it a bunch of times. Uh, haven't played it since though, just cause there's so many games, but uh, great game. Uh, I know it, it can be a bit hard to find, but I highly recommend it. It is a wonderful deck builder with some legacy light elements. I love the uh, cyberpunk. Uh, I think it's one of the only cyberpunk uh, themed ga games I have in my collection. So it, it's really, really good. And it's brutal as hell though. Uh, it, it's really, really brutal. So, uh, you know, be prepared for that. Uh, it does provide a, a grade. It does provide a great uh, brain burn uh, for very, very little setup time. Okay. Some people have recommended it to Mage Knight because of the type of brain burn it offers. Uh, I agree a bit, uh, you know, I think people take that comparison a bit too far, but you know, honestly, I don't necessarily disagree. I think it it, um, it does have, you know, when you, um, if you try it, the puzzle does feel a bit familiar. So definitely check it out. Don't let that game go under your ra radar. I dismissed it for a while, but once I tried it, uh, I got hooked. Really good game. Moving on to Terraforming Mars, Ares Expedition. Uh, the original Terraforming Mars was one of the first board games, uh, solo board games I bought. Um, I got rid of it uh, pretty quick because I really disliked the presentation of the game. I didn't like the art um, and I didn't even know what an engine builder was at the time. I was just learning all this stuff. Uh, so um, I got rid of it. Now I do play the app version because the presentation is a lot sleeker there. I enjoy the app version. And as far as engine builders go, uh, this is one of my favorites, all right? Uh, I, I got the Kickstarter version and uh, as soon as I got it, I, I it stayed on my table for a while. Really good game. And I like that it borrows from Race for the Galaxy. A great engine builder, which I've only played the app version, but I, I love how it borrows from it. And it gets, uh, it, another thing about um, Ares Expedition is that it fixes the issues that I had with the original. Uh, so just one of my favorite engine builders, uh, for sure. Moving on to Warfighter. Uh, great solo experience. It feels like uh, playing Call of Duty or like an action movie. And I, I know there's like an infinite expansions for it. 
Uh, honestly, I think you can, you'll be just fine if you get the, a couple base sets. You can get the World War II and the modern version for some variety. Maybe a couple expansions if you uh, are particular towards a specific country, all right? Uh, but great solo experience. The rules were a bit of a pain, uh, but I love um, outfitting my team before I go on, uh, go on a mission. I, I love the loadout aspect of the game. Uh, and just just fun game, uh, good fun. Just uh, the rules were a bit of a pain though uh, to learn, but great game. Moving on to Empires of the North. Uh, so uh, one of my favorite engine builders, uh, and I um, I was eagerly waiting for the legacy uh, campaign expansion, um, Wrath of the Lighthouse. Uh, but unfortunately, from the reception it got, I avoided it. I hope they fix it be because I was eagerly waiting for that. Uh, I was going to buy that and uh, break out the game for that. But uh, I didn't get to do that last year because the expansion just, they, it seems that they missed the mark, seems to have a lot of errata uh, and unclear rules issues. So I hope that that, get, that gets sorted out because I would love to uh, break out Empires of the North again. All right, so moving on to Twilight Inscription. To date, it's my favorite roll and write game. And one of the things that I love the most about it is how much crunch it offers for the minimal setup time, all right? So for five, 10 minutes tops, you get a two hour, uh, hour and a half to two hour uh, experience, a very crunchy and brain burning uh, experience, all right? Uh, the combos are amazing. Uh, I love uh, the art. It has tons and tons of variety. Uh, I'll leave a link to my full length review if you're interested, all right? but just amazing roll and write game. I still need to try Hadrian's Wall to see how it compares though, but just all around amazing game. All right, and finally, we have Civilization and New Dawn. So uh, to me, I have not to date tried a better uh, Civilization solo experience than this. Uh, there's official rules that support the core set and there's fan made files in order to integrate the expansion, uh, which is absolutely amazing. So the just the core set with the official rules i'll say it's like a seven out of ten i think that's what i scored it but with the expansion once you learn uh, integrated to play it solo with the fan rules it's almost a 10 to me i think i rated it a nine but just amazing uh civilization experience however uh, i need to warn you uh learning the rules is a nightmare because you have uh you have Unfortunately, you have to learn the rules exceptions be that are made for solo play. And then when you bring in the expansion, there's also more rules changes. So you're going to be juggling like four different rule books. Not kidding. Uh, so learning it is a bit of a nightmare. I had to like photocopy and compile like all four rule books into one. I, I didn't make it into a digital file because that would have taken me forever. But I, I had to, yeah, the whole process of learning it is going to be painful, but it is an amazing uh, civilization experience for solitaire play. So highly recommend it. All right, so now let's move on to my number 20 for 2022. All right, so for number 20, we have Jump Drive. Man, this game got me completely hooked for like two weeks when I got it for the first time. I played it for the first time in, in 2021, early 2021. This was my introduction to the Race for the Galaxy system. And you can play it solo thanks to the amazing solo campaigns by Epio. I got so hooked that I made printable um, standard size cards of, of files for uh, the game instead of having to carry a piece of paper around. And uh, since then, he actually got to work on an expansion officially uh, that will have a official solo mode. So I'm really excited for that. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is, I think, um, this is toe in toe, my favorite engine builder next to uh, Ares Expedition. Uh, I just get, I just love how quick it sets up, how quick it plays, uh, and you can just play one, uh, one game after another. And uh, as far as introductions to the Race for the Galaxy system goes, they did a great job for, with this because yeah, I got so hooked, I bought the Race for the Galaxy app. Um, and I've played that a whole bunch. So I haven't felt the need to buy the physical Race for the Galaxy. Maybe I, I will one day, but I think that would be overkill. I think I feel happy just if I want to play against the AI on the app uh, with the big uh, brother Race for the Galaxy. And then if I want physical, I just have this. And one thing about this that I love, you can fit this on a 100 card um, 
uh, deck holder, all right? So it, it becomes a great portable um, engine builder to take with you everywhere. Just amazing game overall. Uh, make sure to check it out. Uh, it, it has a great price as well. And I'm really excited for the expansion, the upcoming expansion, like I said. And congratulations to Epio for uh, managing to work on it on an official level. Also, in the meantime, make sure you check out the standard size uh, cards I made uh, so that you uh, you know, you it, you can fit it all on a um, deck box, and also it just looks a bit better than carrying the piece of paper around. But great game. All right, so moving on to number nineteen, we have Palm Island. So this game, I think, is an achievement in design. Uh, if you don't know, it's a game that you only play in your hand, and there's been a trend of games coming out that you that, that are very minimalistic, uh, that you can only play in your hand. It, it's definitely a design challenge. Uh, from that type of game, this is the only one that I've tried, and it's become a travel staple ever since. Uh, every time I go on a trip, I always take this with me. It's one of the best portable games you can take with you. And you can print it, uh, you can conceivably save it, in be you know, like put it away and, and leave it in a safe state of sorts. So you can always, you know, put it out, almost always, it depends on the uh, game state, whether you can fold it or not, but uh, fit it back in the wallet. But uh, you can pick it, uh, you know, leave it, uh, put it away and then pick it back up later too. Uh, and it plays uh, pretty quick and it's just a lovely design. I know that there's some people that don't care for the puzzle it offers, but I really do like it a lot. Um, and I, like I said, I always take this in trips with me. Uh, the first time I got it, I had the cardboard version, which um, it, it brought me the wrong way uh, using cardboard cards in this game because you have it on your in your hand all the time. And they, it, the cards just get handled a lot, so they're going to see a lot of wear and tear. So I got the deluxe the version later, and ever since then, I've played it a lot more often. Uh, but incredible portable game. Uh, I recommend this to everybody. Uh, there's a print-and-play version, too, that you can download if you don't want to commit to the uh, higher price tag of the physical version. But make sure you check it out. Just a lovely game. All right, so moving on, we have Sprawlopolis at number 18. And this game, I think, is one of the best portable games you can uh, take with you uh, next to Palm Island. So if, if you just want a whole um, uh, solo board gaming experience to take with you, just uh, put in your pockets Prolopolis and Palm Island. Like, you just have a, a lot of fun there to be had just with those two in your pocket. Uh, so Sprawlopolis, I think, is uh, the king of um, button shy games. There hasn't been anything that I've tried from them, from their library, that... I think it's better yet, uh, but I think um, uh, one lovely thing about Buttonshy, uh, if you start collecting their games, is the variety you get from them, right? Uh, so I like collecting them, I like trying them, but I don't typically come back to their games uh, too often. Uh, my favorite uh, from them uh, is this and Schools of Sedlec, uh, but uh, I Sprawlopolis, I think, is just, you know, nothing has beat it yet. And I'm waiting for the uh, Naturopolis um, pledge. Uh, I, I did uh, pledge that from their Kickstarter. What I'm hoping with that one is that the scoring won't be as brutal because one thing, uh, a couple little uh, complaints I have about Sprawlopolis is that the scoring can be a bit, um, it can feel a bit brutal. Some of the conditions, the scoring conditions that might be dealt uh, to you and scoring at the end might feel <laughs> bad. Uh, so, but it is a very, very brain burning game. And uh, the other thing is the table space might uh, be an issue, right, with it. So it kind of, that's a ding against it on the portability aspect. Wherever you go with it, you'll need a decent size table. I don't think you'll be able to play this on a uh, airplane uh, table, right, for example. But uh, great, great uh, portable game. Best button shy game as far as, far as I'm concerned for now. Uh, we'll see if they come up with something uh, better. All right, so moving on to my number 17, we have Orchard, a nine card solitaire game by Mark Tuck. This is a lovely portable game. Uh, I almost always take it with me when I go on trips or if I'm gonna stay over somewhere uh, else uh, for the weekend. Uh, when I come uh, to work, I bring it for lunch breaks as well. So just a lovely portable game. Uh, I, originally had the, I originally had the PNP version, uh, but then I bought the a real uh, game and I think it's a lovely production. It fits in a small box. Uh, it's very minimalistic uh, and I really like what it accomplishes with a few dice and a few cards. And uh, I love the retail version because it uses plastic cards. So just a lovely, lovely uh, 
solitaire game. Great gift, by the way. Uh, you know, if you want to introduce the whole um, solitaire board gaming thing to someone, I think this is an amazing introduc introductory uh, game and just a uh, gift in general. Uh, great price as well. Um, I also tr uh, started playing Grove recently. Uh, some people uh, say, say that Grove replaces Orchard for them. Uh, I don't know where I'm at with that yet. I need to play Grove a bit more. Uh, and um, But yeah, the majority of people have, uh, from what I've uh, read, say that uh, Grove can uh, stay in your collection just fine next to Orchard. They're different enough. We'll see where I uh, where I settle with that. But uh, just lovely uh, game. Uh, make sure you try it if you haven't. And um, I, I also know that Mark Tuck has other games out there uh, that, that I that i want to try uh he has some free uh, print and play games out there so i definitely want to try more of his uh, stuff i really like what he's uh, offered here with orchard and, and grove all right so sitting at number 16 we have cartographers a role player tale and uh wow this game uh as far as the verb and write games go this is just cream of the crop just one of the best you can get um i it's just such a lovely design and it's so creative because you you know if if you want to go uh, super detailed with your maps it allows that um or if you want to just keep it uh, super simple and, and focus on just the gameplay and the scoring you can too which i find very fun it can be a bit swingy i'll, I'll mention that be, uh, early on when you get uh, one, one thing i found with some um uh verb and write games uh, the scoring can be a bit brutal the first couple times you play it uh, and it can feel a bit bad like not not scoring or scoring like negatively or, or super low until you kind of get a hang of it it happened with me uh, with, with me when i first played it i i scored very poorly but you do get better at it obviously with more plays uh but even then i didn't care that much honestly that i scored uh, low it's just such an incredible uh, design and I think though that colored pens are almost are a must in my opinion. I would not want to play this with just a pencil. I I like the colored pens and I like being able to distinguish the different uh, types of uh, land that you're supp supposed to draw. Uh, there's even stamps that you can buy. Uh, I'll link to that. I didn't want to spend the money on them because uh, I haven't. I don't play this game often enough to justify it, but uh, I'll I'll give you a link to uh, the stamps that you can buy in the description in case you're interested for this game. Um, uh, but yeah, the I, I just love how much creativity the, and and customization this offers. Like the fact that people created stamps, uh, the you know the fact that you can draw your map super detailed, uh, just an amazing game. And, and I I enjoy the puzzle of it. It's like Tetris basically. It's like a um, it's like a, a flip and ride version of Tetris. So uh, just absolutely uh, lovely game. If you haven't tried it, uh, please do. Just incredible game. All right, so now to wrap up, let's discuss the comparison to what I submitted the previous year. Uh, so at number 20, we have Castles of Burgundy, the dice game. It was my first roll and write game, and I always take, I still always take a sheet and the dice with me and a, piece of, uh, and a pencil uh, with me on trips. Uh, I really love how it offers, it really does a great job of offering what feels like a full board game experience just with a sheet of paper and a pencil and dice. Um, I I still really love this game. Uh, I just wanted to highlight other games uh, this year, and I guess it just wasn't in my mind because I think I almost all, only I only play it exclusively when I take it on trips with me at this point. I don't really break it out at home. I just prefer playing other games. But it's, it has a special, a special place in my heart. I love that game. Uh, and it's one of my favorite role and um, rights. I, I just love how simple it is. I love what it offers. Um, but uh, just lovely game. Uh, I recommend it. If you're looking for a simple role and ride, uh, I, I recommend that 100%. I already discussed Civilization. Uh, I pushed it out because I haven't played it recently. Again, uh, learning the rules. I do want to play it again, but man, learning the rules again is just going to be a, a nightmare. Uh, you Like I mentioned earlier, you have to juggle like four different rule books if you want to play it with the expansion. Uh, I'll discuss um, Space Empires in a future video so i don't want to i don't want to spoil the where it's gonna uh, be on the track but we'll i'll discuss that later now apex uh, apex is a deck builder uh, i got the uh, collected edition and i just love how much content there is in that box how much variety there is and if you want a good solo experience of the uh, legendary system now 
uh, it's pretty much a it just borrows so much for for the legendary system it's uh, it's anything but in name all right uh, and it came out it, I think it was originally designed around the time where legendary was really popular so it really borrows a lot from it uh, I've I've um I've been vocal in the past about not liking uh, legendary Marvel I just think it's a boring solo experience in my opinion uh, so if you want a good uh, a, a better in my opinion uh, solo legendary experience uh, compared to marvel legendary i recommend apex uh pre apex uh therapod all right uh just uh fun uh deck, deck builder with lots of variety and also if you want a dinosaur game in your solo collection there's no better choice than that in my opinion uh just very fun uh, a bit brutal too um just so much so much variety in that collected edition box i just love how much <laughs> how much content there is in it just a uh, great game and I've already discussed War, uh, Warfighter, so I'm not going to uh, repeat myself. I just haven't played it in a bit. That's why it didn't make the list. Uh, but I do think that you should try that game. Uh, and you don't need so too much content for it. Uh, you don't have to buy expansions and whatnot. Just a lot of content in the base game. But yeah, folks, so that's it. Uh, those were my numbers uh, 20 through 16. And I hope you come back for numbers 15 through 11. And thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.